I uh, completed high school, then went on to college in Queensboro, in uh, Bayside, New York. And that's when I got exposed to uh, the analytical persuasion of being involved in the revolution of the 60s. Besides all of the other political conflicts, the wars, and all these other things that were going on, we realized that there was a food revolution going on during that time as well. So being exposed to, to the hippies and the black power movement and uh, recognizing that certain foods that were being uh, made available in certain communities were actually weapons. So uh, taking it very seriously, I became a vegetarian during that time and uh, started doing a lot of research into natural living, natural lifestyle. So by 1970, I was not consuming any animal products whatsoever and then uh, went on with my research and found out about live food or raw food or living foods, but what I term sun-fired foods because, uh, of course, raw food is uh, really doesn't give credit to nature, to life, the way it deserves to be because there's nothing raw about, you know, uh, perfect cuisine cooked by the sun. So that's why I term my cuisine sun-fired foods. So by 1976, I uh, stopped consuming any cooked food whatsoever and became all sun-fired. This was through uh, reading the wisdom of the ancient masters, uh, people like Hilton Hotema, Norman Walker, the father of juiceology, <laughs> you know, and also Dr. Benesh. There was also the, uh, the wisdom of Dr. Ann Wigmore in developing the Hippocrates Health Institute and also uh, Victor Skolvinskis. He was a physicist doing all of this experimentation and coming up with the sprout culture along with Dr. Ann Wigmore. And also I got to meet Dick Gregory who was influenced by a, a young old lady out of Chicago named Dr. Alvinia Fulton. Uh, and she put him on a fast and he became a fruitarian. So I was quite inspired uh, getting a hold of this type of uh, first-hand information to cor corroborate the things that I was reading. So in switching or uh, elevating to only eating sun-fired foods, I started seeing an, an opening or a realignment of my original consciousness about food because growing up with my grandparents on the canal zone you know we had our own little garden in the backyard and so we you know she grew all her herbs and everything was fresh this is really the legacy that I was brought up with is a fresh culture so for me it was really coming back home when I landed uh, with the, the, the sun-fired food concept because it really took me back to, to, to my ancestry, to my legacy of growing up in, an, in a period of time when uh, we were living in an environment where uh, we only had an ice box, not even a refrigerator, so we couldn't preserve and hold over food, so everything had to be fresh. And also the cooking uh, during those times was a drudgery, you know, to see my grandmother cook over a cold pot or a kerosene stove, you know, I just didn't want to go there. So, anyway, by the time I was uh, on my own, uh, have my own place and having to fix my own food, it was just natural for me to, uh, to tap into to, to that background or those seeds that were planted, but to also be able to uh, use modern technology in terms of the juicer, the food processor, and the blender, and to fuse that uh, with a fresh cuisine, with a living cuisine that had a gourmet bend to it, a gourmet flavor to it. Because my mother, she was a chef. She was a trained chef. 
Uh, she was a sous chef at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. So growing up in her kitchen and my grandmother's kitchen, I really, you know, was pretty savvy about how to to to, uh, to spice. You know, that's that's really the the whole thing that I grew up with is a in a spicing environment. How to make food food. <laughs> so in uh, applying that to my lifestyle with fresh living foods, I. Uh, I had to really tap into that very seriously because the live food that I was exposed to within uh, the, the, the 70s was really designed for people who were ill. You know, give thanks to Dr. Ann Wigmore and all of the practitioners that they were really addressing, you know, uh, illness, uh, healing people uh, through food. So the food was very basic, very plant, bland, very pure, very clean, without a lot of spices and things like that. But if someone coming into this lifestyle uh, from an eater's perspective and not being sick, <laughs> you know, it's like I really uh, felt that I had to be sick to eat that type of cuisine. So using their uh, science, their knowledge, and their expertise, and fusing with my traditional culture,